Hello there and welcome to Complete Games. I'm James and this is a brief overview of the brand new early access title Prehistoric Kingdom. The devs were kind enough to give me a key and if you're familiar with games like Jurassic World Evolution, Planet Coaster or Planet Zoo then this one might be up your street. Now before we get started I just want to say that this game is in extremely early access. A lot of the management side of the game is yet to be implemented and there's quite a few of the core mechanics that are still yet even in the game. But they have got a roadmap, and like I say, it is very early days. I am pleased to say that I really did enjoy working with the terrain editor in this one. There's a lot of options, and I do play games like City Skylines, and when it comes to manipulating the terrain on there, it can be a little bit difficult, but this one just felt like painting quite easily over the train. You've got a whole host of options for different textures. You're not just locked into a specific biome for the type of textures you can use. As you can see here, I'm using a combination of sand and dirt and just making the mountain sides myself. The roads and pathing tools all feel very familiar to those who have used city skylines the way that the roads and everything snapped together and how you go about getting your curves on your pathways. It all felt pretty snappy and I can see underneath the hood of this game there is definitely going to be a lot of customization. Okay so I've just laid down a few pathways. I thought we would make a little pen for some dinosaurs and just do a little brief overview of the sort of things that you can do in this game. So I'm going to be going for an Ark Survival Evolved theme as well for my build and when I say you can get it deep into customization with this game look at the amount of stuff that you can play around with. Now I made this sign just out on the side I thought we'd call it the Ark Park. All of these things are going to be able to upload to the Steam Workshop so this is going to be a real huge advantage I mean, I'm not that great at doing my buildings and designs, but if you'd like to see me do a playthrough, I was thinking, well, if I was going to design a park, what kind of park would it be? And I was thinking, well, an Ark Survival Evolved theme might not be too bad. Could make some sort of thatch and wooden huts and even have a go at making the obelisks themselves. So I've just made a little bit of a plaza here, and that's our sign that everybody's going to see when they walk in. Over here I wanted to do something with a bridge and that gives me a chance as well just to go over the terrain editor that's in the game just down here. So really having a lot of fun using this, it's just like a paintbrush tool and we can lower the terrain, we can change the size of the brush and the density as well, flattening off the terrain, it all feels pretty fluid and something I think I could get quite used to. And I think when it comes to a lot of these games, it's kind of like painting. You've really got to use your imagination. And as of yet, the Steam Workshop is not in the game, but it's going to be great to be able to make your own assets and just upload them to the Steam Workshop or just keep them in your folder. So it's one of them games you like the building aspects of Planet Coaster you're really going to enjoy this one. So what I thought I'd do is I'd stick a bridge in perhaps we'll stick some water underneath just here or something have a little dinosaur pen that people can walk around the outside of nothing nothing too fancy. So we're going to put some water just down in here. So that's done on the terrain editor. As you can see, we've got clean water, rough water, murky water. And unlike on skylines, the water doesn't just drop in. It actually, I've got it set to go to a depth of one meter. And it doesn't just spill out on your map. So I kind of like the way that that's also painted in. Sometimes with city skylines, when it comes to playing around with the water, you can just make one miss move with the terrain and suddenly you've flooded your city. So I kind of like the way that that's done here. So we've got some pre-existing buildings, quite a lot to choose from at the moment, but like I say it's fully modular. So let's just go and grab one of these bridges here, this bamboo bridge. 
and I figured that might fit nicely over this pathway. So we've got these classic omnidirectional tools. Anyone familiar with things like Blender are going to be quite at home with this sort of control. And I think a lot of you who are using programs like Photoshop as well, a lot of the key shortcuts are very similar there. Okay, so what we need to do is I need to raise that terrain up so we can get the bridge kind of flat and have a pathway coming off there. Bring that up sort of like that. I will tidy up all of the sides that look jagged. It's just one of them things where you have to do it a little bit at a time. It's just like painting, you just keep on adding textures. Just tidy that out a little bit there. Smooth out our surface. Just connect a path over here. Just kind of curve that around slightly. Something like that. And we've got a bridge everyone can walk across just to view our dinosaurs drinking in the water. And get our flattened tool out again. Let's say I'm still getting used to use this, but I can feel that I am going to get quite comfortable with the terrain editor. Okay. Yeah, that looks kind of like plush with it. Okay, we'll just smooth off these edges. A few rocks in the corner. You always find the thing is with these games that the design doesn't come together until the end once you start putting them finer details on and shading things in. Let's make this a little bit less jaggedy. Smooth it out a little bit. It's starting to come together now. Now... I've had a go on the campaign mode as well, and like I say, there's still a lot to be done with the campaign. Features like the dinosaurs and staffing, they're just not in the game yet, so I think really, if you're looking at jumping into this quite early, then it's the sandbox and this mode that's really going to be what you're getting at the moment. Okay. So smooth this off as well coming down here just here and smooth this bit out as well yeah I'm liking that perhaps we have a raised part in the middle with some trees okay let's try and change some of the textures again we can use some gravel wouldn't have any grass under there so we'll stick some gravel at the bottom of our water and again this really just helps when it comes to detailing, it's natural that as that's water, there wouldn't be any grass growing under there. We'll mix that one in, just something else. We've got something a little bit lighter. Quite a lot of options here. There we go, some rocks just down in the middle there. Mix in a couple of textures together. Just adds to the realism of it. Okay. Yeah, I'm liking that little bridge for everybody to walk across. I'm gonna get some viewing platforms open. Perhaps around the middle here, we're gonna need some trees. So I just wanna block this off with a fence. Now, I'm planning to put some smaller herbivores down in this little area, so I don't really need anything big. So far there's 30 dinosaurs and creatures available in the game. So there's quite a lot at this point of the early access. With more still to come, of course. And... I don't know if I want to come round with this bamboo fence, or perhaps we'll just swap it out. There is a just have the bamboo coming off of the bridge and I'm going to swap that for the small glass fence okay yeah this is the one I was looking for so just something to keep 
the public away. Keep the dinosaurs in. And there we go. Managed to go all the way around. So we've now created our pen. Everything should be okay. Shouldn't wander without there as long as we use some of the smaller herbivores. Oh, should be fine. Okay. So on to getting some dinosaurs in our park. So this is our hatchery. There's a few different variants of this and of course you can even make your own. But this is where all of our dinosaurs are done. Do have to do research in the campaign mode dig up fossils so that one is very similar to Jurassic Park evolution stick a few trees just along our pathway just to hide it at the back much better okay and a few amenities as well for our guests we need some restaurants and perhaps some bathrooms as well so what have we got here what's this the oh okay that's probably a little bit too big just want the ice cream or something a little bit smaller yeah perhaps this will do again just pull this forward it can be a little bit finicky to get things to clip like I say it really is fully modular and the idea is you're going to be able to design your own buildings and come up with your own themes which is why I was wondering, and do let me know in the comments if you'd like me to do an ARC inspired theme park. That'd be quite an interesting challenge to come up with. We could carry on with it. And as you can see, we've got some grass just clipping through our building there. So I just want to change to sand. Just put some sand down underneath it. It gets rid of them blades of grass just clipping through our textures there. So there we go, we've got something for our guests to spend some money on as they walk in to get some toilets down. Where are they? Um, get to facilities. We want Perhaps these ones will do. And again, I mean, the possibilities are pretty endless with this sort of stuff. Of course, I'm just using the assets that are already in the game, but when Steam Workshop comes, let's put a statue down in the middle of our plaza here, something for our guests to walk through just as they come into the park. Um, perhaps not the T-Rex one. The Iguanodon. There we go. Something a little bit more round. Some seating. There we go. Somewhere around there. Perfect. It's all starting to come together now. Okay. So I guess... Everybody walks in just here. We've got our sign, the Ark Park. And... So far, just the one pen. Okay. So let's breed some dinosaurs to stick in here, some herbivores. Just come into our nursery, open the nursery menu. So we've got everything that's actually currently available in the game because I am in sandbox mode. And um, I guess we'll go for Perhaps the Triceratops as the larger animal we could shove down there. Perhaps put a few of those in. Different skin types available. Perhaps have a little mix of them. Um, go for like two males. Four or five females in there. And perhaps two of that variety and we'll stick a different variety in there. There we go. And this is one of the re areas it is going to differ in the game. You can see here what types of plant matter to the particular dinosaurs. So this is very much going to matter when it comes to sticking them in the correct areas. And they won't be happy if they're in more of a 
tropical environment. Of course, the woolly mammoths you'd naturally expect would be in like a more boreal environment. So, I kind of like that idea. So, do need some more trees down. It says they require plenty of trees, so shove a few of these boreal variety down. That's one of the things you just want to be careful with here, that you're putting the correct plant life in the pens around the dinosaurs. Some of them don't want to be around too much water, that type of thing. And that'll do for now. Looks like we've got one of our trikes ready to release. Just go and grab that. Then we can finally get our park open to the general public. And I'd say we'd start using and spending some money. But we've got unlimited money at the moment. Now, I would have started the game in challenge mode, but like I say, after playing it, you get all of the money back for deleting trees and stuff. It's still early day game, and a lot of the management aspects of the game are not there yet. So there we go. Our first dinosaur, the Triceratops. Triceratops, one of the most recognizable and largest dinosaurs of its kind. Just think, this species was completely eradicated in a mass extinction that killed three quarters of the species on Earth. And 66 million years later, it has the chance to walk the Earth once again. We're witnessing something truly remarkable. So Nigel Martin there, I think he's the guy who did all of the walking Earth stuff for the BBC or walking among dinosaurs. So they've got his voice, he does a lot of this stuff to help guide you, and that's quite a nice touch. So, we'll just check here, as you can see they're going to need some stuff, they need somewhere to take shelter, they're going to need food, so we'll stick some fruit down for our trike. A couple of places that they can gather fruit, say one amongst the forest, maybe one down here by the river. Plenty of feeding spots. And we're also going to need a place for them to shelter. Got a termite nest there. Perhaps if we put one of the smaller dinosaurs in, we can actually use some insects as well. Stick some dung beetles down. These guys naturally get rid of all of the poop. And we'll shove an ant hill down as well shove some dinosaurs in that enjoy some insects as well as the fruit loving dinosaurs as well so people are starting to come into our park now and the rest of our trikes are ready to be released so that's let them all go and roam in their new home and can put them down somewhere around here How many do I do? Is it five? Six of them? Okay. So we also need some shelter for them as well. There is weather effects in the game, so in order to keep their health and happiness up, you need to do not just food, but they need some shelter as well. You can design caves and things for your creatures, and I'm just going to pick out one of the assets here, but you can also design these things yourself. Let's say the the possibilities are only limited by your imagination. And I guess we'll use one of these larger ones, perhaps. Yeah, that one's just a little bit smaller. We'll have one facing over the little lake we've got here. Somewhere around here should do it. Fabulous. Okay, and then we need some bed in as well. Let's grab some of the large stuff. We'll put that under there. So somewhere our trikes can all go and chill out in the shade. And I'm going to put a smaller shelter down as well because I want to add just one more dinosaur in this penning area. And Spin this round, perhaps this way. Okay, that 
one's already got some bedding inside of it. Perhaps we'll put a little bit of extra food down as well. Just make sure everybody's taken care of. But even when it comes to these little shelters for the dinosaurs or just designing your own cave, you can really play around with all of the modular pieces. So I think once the Steam Workshop has been implemented, the amount of pieces and things that you're going to get to play around with, it really is going to add a huge amount of depth to this game. Yeah, I think this one looks pretty small. The Psittacosaurus, it looks like it's going to live in the same sort of environment as the trike. Again, a few different variants of it. Shall we shove perhaps half a dozen of these in to roam around with our trikes as well? Um, say, let's make like five females and a couple of males. Again, breeding's not been added to the game yet. So, I'm not sure if they'll have that as part of the game. Obviously, we've got the males and females in there. Maybe they'll be able to breed in their habitats as well. Maybe that'll be some sort of event if you've met all the right conditions. Okay, so let's look at our Ark Park and our finished little area here. Well, I say finished, actually. It's, it's barely even begun because the amount of detailing and the amount of stuff that you can do in this game really the possibilities are pretty endless and um, I will be looking forward to checking back in slowly as more and more gets implemented to this game so we've got our little Edmondosaurus statue there in the middle people can come and enjoy their ice cream sit under the statue got people crossing the bridge here as well so that's all working as it should be we've got our dinosaurs just enjoying themselves down here don't know what's going on with that trike <laughs> it appears to have got stuck and there's plenty of poop gathering around as well so it looks like i need to adjust some stuff here i think this is a little bit steep this mound that we've got so we've got one there enjoying the sunshine just chilling out so let's just try and smooth out some of this terrain might have made it a little bit too steep and i also want to put down some more of these dung beetles they eventually clear up all of the poop so it looks like you're well and truly stuck down there doesn't it stuck in the food I'll see if I can do something with the terrain. Just want to spread a couple more of these out because we have got quite a lot of dinosaurs in this pen, so we need to keep things clean. Okay. This one just sitting in the sun, looking all happy. I'll have to drop a T-Rex in there, see, we'll see what that does. Wouldn't be so happy then. But yeah, really, really quite enjoying this. Looking forward to seeing more updates. Like I say, it's extremely early days at the moment. We're in 0.1.0 .0 and lots and lots of stuff still to be implemented. As you can see, our little dinos there, the Cicadosaurus, it's getting stuck. So what I'm going to do is just need to flatten out the terrain, raise it up a little bit. And... Let me know down in the comments down below what you're thinking of this one. Would you like to see me have a crack at building a Ark Survival Evolved themed dinosaur world? Just need to turn the intensity of our brush up actually and just smooth this out a little bit. That should help things out. Yeah, I think that's better there. It's just a little bit too steep coming down to the water there. I'm just going to flatten this out as well because... I think that one was just clipping in the food basket. I made these just a little bit too steep coming down to the water. There we go. I think that should have sorted it out. So you really can get lost for hours in these sort of games. Just painting and just adjusting. You all right down there, little fella? Yeah, it's not died. I was going to say, I don't think death's implemented in the game quite yet. So, there we go. 
our little herbivore pen for our ark parks. So there we have it, a little bit of prehistoric kingdom. Definitely going to be keeping my eyes on this one, looking forward to seeing how they keep up with their roadmap and definitely, definitely going to be enjoying this once it's available via the Steam Workshop with all of the mods and assets and customization that's going to come into this game. I'm sure it's going to be lots and lots of fun. It's going to need a lot of optimizing and a lot of stuff is still yet in the game. So might be just a little bit too early for some of you, but for those of you who like the sandbox part of these games and just the modular building, I think there is quite a lot there. But until next time, I'm James from Complete Games and I'll see you.